Hi folks, thanks for tuning in to Sprocket's Garage. This is the first video of a new series that I'm kicking off called Doc's Dirt Cheap DIY. In this series we're going to be looking at tips and tricks and techniques and mechanical workarounds and, and, and ways of doing things that are simple, easy, and you know above all else don't cost much money. You know ways to do things without the high dollar tools, ways to do things that you know necessarily you don't have your tools with you, you're out in the field, whatever the case may be, tips and tricks and techniques that any budding young mechanic can do without necessarily, you know, having the guide with them, without having the mechanical gods with them. So today, being the first episode of Doc's Dirt Cheap DIY, we're going to get to that kill switch thing that I was alluding to on my update video there. For those of you with a V-twin, um, you're probably aware, but you might not be aware, of the little diodes in the kill circuit. And uh, if you watched my last video, you are aware of the fact that I have a separate kill switch, separate from my ignition switch, and I'm going to tell you why I do. So just to reiterate, uh, those diodes are there on the kill circuit, one attached to each of the coils to keep them from grounding each other out and killing your spark. When they go bad, they can cause erratic operation, they can cause your engine not to run at all or to misfire or to have a weak spark, and it can be infuriating. Uh, obviously, the correct thing to do is just run out and buy a replacement diode or two replacement diodes and whip out your soldering gun and, you know, cut, paste, boom, done. However, you might not necessarily be capable of that, or you might not, in my case, have an electronic supply shop anywhere near you, and you're not willing to, you know, spend 10 or $15 in shipping for a couple of diodes that cost you a buck and a half. To me, that's just silliness. So when I have the opportunity to pick up a couple of diodes for cheap, in-person, brick-and-mortar shopping, I will. In the meantime, I had a toggle switch of the right description kicking around to do it, so let's have a closer look at how that works. Again, if you have a bad diode on your Vanguard V-Twin or on your Intec Twin or on your Kohler V-Twin, a V-Twin with two separate magnetos and the thing is running like caca and you've got a weird spark thing happening, odds are pretty good you've got a bad diode. So let's have a look at what's going on, what I did as a workaround and what you can As you folks are no doubt aware, uh, V-Twin OPE engines that use a magneto ignition system have a diode on each of the coils on the primary side of the coil that ties into the kill circuit and the reason for this diode is to stop current flow in one direction that's what diodes do now if you were to wire the two primary sides of the two coils together directly without a diode uh, your engine would not run uh, they ground each other out uh, with the negative pulses and kill the spark. That is indeed how the kill circuit works on a magneto ignition system. You ground out the primary side of the coil and you get no spark. Those of you that have played with wiring at least a little bit already know this. So the manufacturers include a diode that goes on the primary side of each coil so that when the wires come together to go off to the kill switch or the ignition switch or whatever they don't ground each other out until you tell it to, until you switch the ground. Uh, now, some time back I had one of those diodes go bad and this can cause all kinds of erratic operation. It was actually causing a misfire on, uh, on both of my cylinders which made it really interesting to troubleshoot because that diode was coming and going. It was killing and not killing and killing and not killing and I had a weak spark on one side and an intermittent spark on the other side and it just made it a nightmare until I went, oh, diodes. So, you know, I cut the kill wires north of the diodes and all of a sudden the engine is running like a freaking dream. So I have a couple of options. I can go shop for a couple of diodes, which I can still do. I don't have any electronics component stores anywhere near me, and I'm not the kind of guy that's going to order a dollar fifty worth of diodes online and pay ten bucks worth of shipping. It's not worth it. So here's what I did. I have a toggle switch here. I'll hold that a little closer to the camera. This is a double pull single throw toggle switch. Sometimes they have more terminals on this end. Sometimes they don't. But instead of having just two terminals, it's got at least this many. And the way that works is literally, this is one circuit, this is another circuit. Uh, a double pull toggle switch will switch two circuits simultaneously. And this is what I used to replace the diodes in my Vanguard kill circuit. And how that works is I quite literally took the primary side of the coil 
of one coil to one of these terminals on one side of the switch and I took the primary side, the kill wire, from the other coil to the other side of the switch. These don't ever come in contact with each other. Inside this switch is two moving contacts. One switch is one side, one switch is the other side, and there the two shall meet. So, we got the coil coming in on one side, we got the other coil coming in on the other side, and then what we do is we tie these two terminals together with a wire and run it off to ground. So when the switch is switched into the kill position, that's when everything gets grounded out and that's when it shuts the engine down. When it's in the run position, these two wires never meet, these two circuits never meet, and that is the cheap, I already have a switch way of getting around that ridiculous diode thing until you can get around to replacing your diodes. I think we're going to cruise on over to the whiteboard and I'll show you a little diagram. Okay, so here's a loose representation of what your kill circuit normally looks like. Um, We've got each of your magnetos, your coils, going off to a spark plug, right? These are your high tension leads, there's the coils, here's the kill wires. They go through a couple of di diodes before joining and going off to your kill switch. Now that might be your key switch or maybe, you know, uh, a toggle switch in some applications. If your diodes, diodes are okay, then, you know, through a toggle switch to the ground. When you close the circuit, it grounds out the primary sides of the coils and you lose your spark. Now, like I said, when one of these diodes goes bad, it can cause all kinds of running problems and I just have not been in a position to pick up a couple of replacement diodes. But what I do have is switches. And maybe you do too, and it might be easier for you to lay hands on a switch. You might not care, whatever the case may be. So here's what the whole affair is going to look like. We're just going to cut these wires, throw the diodes away, get rid of them. Now I'm going to try and draw you a semi-accurate representation of a double pull switch. There's a couple of terminals. There's your terminals. Now here's what a switch looks like. That's your moving contact inside. That's your moving contact inside. This dashed line represents that they are mechanically connected but not electrically connected. So when you move the handle, both contacts move and you know each contact in turn makes contact with its own portion of the circuit with its own pull but they don't connect together inside. So bang bang wires straight into the switch no question there now outside of the switch they can be cross-connected and go off to the ground this way when the switch is in the open position in the run position there is no electrical contact between the two primary sides of the two coils and the engine can run and when you close the circuit everything gets grounded out and it dies and that is what I did on this particular Vanguard engine because I couldn't lay hands on diodes as fast as I could lay hands on a double pole switch. Hope that helps you out. So one more time for the people in the cheap seats. That's our kill switch. Works like a charm. So folks, I hope you found this first episode of Doc's Dirt Cheap DIY helpful to you. I'd like to thank you once again for watching Sprockets Garage on YouTube and tuning in and subscribing and sharing and liking and thumbs upping and everything else that y'all do with these YouTube videos. I appreciate it. And I'd like to remind you that you can truck on over to sulfurcitydesign.com to feed your adhesive addiction. And don't forget to check out Sprockets Garage on Facebook. I'll post the links in the video description. Until next time, take care of yourself.